we're driving our Ford Bronco Sasquatch package with the 2.3 liter engine that we bought in August of 2021. With two years and 28,000 miles of experience driving this thing, we have learned a lot. It's been more than a year since our last update like this. Let's tell you everything that's gone wrong in the last year. All right, let's immediately pay off that clickbaity thumbnail. There was a recall, I got a notice in the mail and it's like, oh, you gotta attend to this thing. It was the dumbest recall I could have imagined. The recall notice said that our Bronco fails to conform to latch plate access requirements. I'm like, I don't know what even that means, but like, uh, let's go have it checked out. So went down to Ken Grody Ford in Redlands, California, and I had another great experience. I was standing in the uh, line for service and literally three different people came up and they're like, has somebody taken care of you? Is somebody, are you being taken care of? I'm like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I spent two hours being productive in their lobby, great Wi-Fi, and then I came out to see what they had done. They had added a clip to the seat belts. Good job. Just a clip, that's it. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> All right. Oh, they also let me know that the rear brake pads were getting a little bit low, so I will attend to that in the not too distant future. But yeah, a, a clip. <laughs> Recall, recall. And I can't help but think that the entire purpose of the recall was to make some lawyers somewhere a bunch of money. We have never had a moment where it's like, oh God, the seatbelt is so inaccessible, I can't use this. Dumb recall. Oh, actually, they also printed out a supplement for the owner's manual um, for me to put in the glove compartment. And as soon as we're done with this video, I will throw that in the trash. But what if we need it? <laughs> we don't what if we don't know how to use the clip? <laughs> we we know how to use the clip. For me, I took it as an opportunity to experience more of the excellent service at Ken Grody Ford. Thank you, Ken Grody, for such an excellent experience. No, this isn't sponsored. They don't know I made these videos, or maybe they do, but I haven't talked to them about it. I should add that the Bronco, as an entire model, has not been immune to um, reliability issues. There were issues with the 2.7 liter engine. There have been other recalls, but for our Bronco in particular, all of the issues have been extremely minor. Where's some wood? I need to knock it. Uh, I have a funny answer, <laughs> but we're just gonna let that one slide. If you haven't been following along in our adventures, we did a video where we ran through all of the early problems we had, and it was pretty thorough. And if you're curious what problems we've had with our Bronco, you can click up here. One item I did wanna cover that we had covered previously, and we have an update on, are the tires. So the stock Goodyear tires, we had so many problems with them, like slashes and punctures. You ran over a rock one time. A, I should avoid driving over rocks. But B, shouldn't a Bronco tire be able to handle driving over a rock? You it's sure, a rock. you would think so. So about 10 months ago, the people from BFG were kind enough to give us some KO2 tires, and we've been testing them out ever since. And update, they've been fantastic. Sweetie, how many tires have we had to replace because of damage? Zero. How many rocks have I run over? Uh. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> we did a whole video about our KO2 experience after three months, but I can say seven months on from that, they continue to perform exceptionally well uh, when driving off-road, excellent traction. On-road drivability is totally up to par versus the stock tires. Noise isn't a problem, and some people had said maybe it would be. We drove these things through a blizzard, literal blizzard, that shut down our entire community, and they performed amazingly well. And fuel economy hasn't changed either. Really the only potential downside from going from the stock Goodyears to the BFG KO2s is that they're more expensive. But to my mind, you know what's more expensive than uh, spending more on, uh, per tire? Replacing tires frequently. Overall, the KO2 tires have been a massive improvement for us over the stock tires. That does bring me to a few other modifications that we've made to our Bronco since our last update. We installed a used Bronco capable bumper to accommodate Ford's skid plate kit. And then we also installed Ford's skid plate kit. There's a supplemental Mavit transmission plate that we added. Our Bronco, because it was a lower trim, came with halogen rear, rear lights, and I was like, we should get some LEDs. So we swapped in the Oracle Flush Fit LED taillights, and I really love those, both for aesthetic and for this brighter function. They're bright lights, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Another modification that we made that I'm really excited about is the addition of diodynamic lights in the capable bumper. We made a whole video about it, but uh, to get those installed and do so in a very OEM clean way, I also installed these upfitter switches up here, and man, that was a real adventure. I think well worth it, but we learned a lot about how stupidly I spec'd our Bronco initially. And then a few aesthetic changes using the power of powder coating uh, made the D-rings that are integrated into the capable bumper white. I took that skid plate and I thought, gosh, a Raptor skid plate with that silver would look really cool, uh, but that's like almost $1,700 if you try and buy one new. And then I had another thought, which was, why don't we just powder coat the one we have? So that was much, much cheaper. 120 bucks, 
expertly powder coated at Precision Powder Coaters in San Bernardino. Taste is completely subjective. There's a zillion ways to spec out a Bronco, but personally, I really like how ours has come together and it's settled pretty well. It's got all the function, OEM-like um, usability and additional things that we need for uh, where we live and our lifestyle. And I'm really grateful you've been willing to tackle all these projects and do them yourself and save us lots of money. Happy to help. And we still really like the MagnaFlow exhaust. We weren't sure if it would be too loud, but it's just the right note of character for driving around. 100% agree. I suppose it wasn't surprising that a first year Ford Bronco had some issues, but the early issues we had were pretty minor. And over the past year, We've been basically problem free, except for those uh, seatbelt clips. Wow, boy, sure I'm glad we got those fixed. So basically, we've been very fortunate to not have any of the serious recalls. Based on our experience, what do you think? Would you buy a Ford Bronco? If so, if no, tell us in the comments. And as always, if, as many people have predicted, our Bronco totally fails and breaks down and has massive problems down the road, we will share it in a video. But for right now, problem free. If you'd like to follow along with our Bronco ownership journey or watch the new car reviews we normally make, you are welcome to subscribe. Good job talking about our Bronco ownership experience thus far. Family may have a five and a five. You, come get your high five. Bam! <laughs>